This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. If you've ever watched a teen rom-com, you know that prom night is the peak of high school existence. Normally shy kids take big risks and get big rewards, experiencing romantic and safely sexual moments that make the rest of their lives meaningful. But this never happened to you. Back in 2009, you were dropping off your prom date. The moment was right, the moon was bright, and they were clearly waiting for you to kiss them in a moment that would make Freddie Prince Jr. blush. And right at the pivotal moment, you gave him a fist bump and said, Catch you in calculus, bud, and drove home in your stepdad's Chevy Blazer listening to Adele. Years later, they're married to a tech bro who describes himself as a full-time human, part-time entrepreneur. And after enough white wine, you end up cruising their Instagram wondering if you'd be in their vacation pics too if you just would have puckered up. But what if you could? And no, we don't mean time travel, but that's another video. Don't worry. We mean diving into a digital reality that's just as realistic as the one that our buddy Neo experiences in The Matrix. Because if this were possible, we could go back and have a mulligan on prom night to get that slow-mo rom-com smooch. Let's see if it's possible on the science is hard. Can we build a real Matrix? But before we learn more about plugging your brain into a computer, I wanna tell you about this week's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN's uncrackable encryption and secure protocols help keep your data secure as you click around the internet. There are so many upsides to using a secure VPN like Surfshark, but one of the major perks is that it keeps your location totally private, and that can be a game changer. For instance, you can access streaming content that's only been released in other countries, so there are no barriers to what movies and TV shows you can watch. And whenever you're in the mood to even visit another country, you can make sure you get the best price on your plane tickets. Just connect your secure Surfshark VPN to other VPNs around the world, and you're ready to track down the best deal. One subscription covers all your favorite devices, like your laptop, Android, Amazon Fire Stick, PlayStation, and more. Plus, you can still use your favorite apps too, like Chrome and Firefox. Get started by clicking the link in the description and using the promo code WISECRACK. When you do, you can get Surfshark VPN for 83% off plus three extra months for free. Go to surfshark.deals slash wisecrack or hit the link in the description. Protect yourself online and download Surfshark VPN today. And now, back to the show. The good news is we're not starting from scratch here. Scientists have already been hard at work creating simulated realities, but they're doing this for clinical and therapeutic work not for the sake of using human bodies as massive biodegradable Duracell batteries. At this point, most simulated reality technology is aimed at helping people, which is a pleasant plot twist from the Matrix films. But what would be more therapeutic than letting you relive and redo your most embarrassing teenage moments? The most straightforward way to make you the Neo of light petting is brain-machine interfaces. As you remember from the films, humans are lab-grown lumps of flesh and bones connected via head jacks to an all-encompassing virtual reality. We're not growing humans yet, but who knows? We wouldn't put it past Bezos. But maybe we could shove lightning cables into our brains to enter a new reality. This would involve hacking into the multi-step process by which our brain uses data from our sense receptors to produce our mental perception of the world. This starts when the sensory receptors of our eyes, nose, and hands take in information about our environment. This data travels to different regions of our brains, which then turns all of this data into what we casually refer to as reality. And what is this reality other than our brain's interpretation of electrical signals? So if you want to get to second base on your date's front porch, we need to figure out how to bypass the first part of this input chain, our sensory organs, mimic their electrical output, and then feed some new signals directly into your brain to create a whole new world inside your skull. But don't pop your digital Altoids yet. Because while this is theoretically possible, scientists have yet to figure out how to use brain cables to bypass our built-in sensory input systems. However, scientists have developed brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs. They can record neuronal activity, process the data, and then use that data to control a function outside of the brain, like uh, an artificial limb, a wheelchair, or a computer cursor. Eventually, scientists hope to use this technology to put implants in the retina and visual cortex that can restore sight to the blind, finally actualizing the promises made by the song Amazing Grace. 
And while this all sounds great, it's not helping you get any closer to the promises made by the Sixpence None the Richer song, Kiss Me, because current technology is about output and not input. Meaning that BCIs are great at gathering output data from our brains, but not so good at inputting new data into our brains. Which is kind of a prerequisite for teenage romantic redemption. So if we're not yet able to plug ourselves into another reality, are we forever cursed to stay stuck in the material realm? Maybe not, because even if we can't pump a new reality into our brains, we can at least wrap an entirely new reality around our faces and into our ears. Enter virtual reality or VR. This takes care of our input problems. Because while we can't pump data directly into our brains, we can use our built-in input devices, i.e. our eyes and ears, to immerse ourselves in an alternate reality. And we're not talking about the VR headsets that you might already be using for watching movies. We're talking about VR visors that utilize separate screens from each eye displaying an image from a slightly different angle to mimic how our eyes take in data in the real world. It's called stereoscopic vision. But can this type of simulated reality <laughs> help you become the cool and confident 17 year old that you always wanted to be? Can tiny screens in front of your eyes really create the butterflies experienced by a fearfully horny teenager? Well, while you might not be able to hold the clammy hand of your crush, scientists have figured out how to make the VR experience much more convincing. And that's through a series of clever tricks they are able to play on our feeble brains. One way they do this is via something called the body ownership illusion. Let's say that in a VR setting, you saw a dog licking your digital hand while at the same time, an actual dog licked your real hand. This combination of visual and tactile signals would trick your brain into feeling ownership over the digital hand in front of you. So, so I guess if you just have your dog kiss you while you experience that magical smooch in VR, it's basically the same, right? Another trick used in VR is accelerators that detect body motion, which can then be integrated into your VR experience, making it feel more real and immersive. And with a thing called redirected walking, VR can manipulate your brain into feeling like you're walking in a long straight line, when in reality, you're just going in circles. All the better for long walks on the beach with your crush. But VR can also avoid physical movement altogether by tricking your internal perception of self-motion, also known as vection. Adding multiple visual, auditory, tactile, and environmental cues can enhance vection. So VR can also make you think you're slow dancing in the moonlight when you're really just sitting on the couch. So are advanced VR visors our backdoor into the matrix? Not really. For one, engineers aren't yet able to create photorealistic images in real time, so your digital reality is gonna look more like second life than first life. In fact, researchers estimate that creating simultaneous lifelike renderings would require 0.5 petaflops of rendering power, which is way beyond what we're capable of. For perspective, one petaflop is 100 times more powerful than the human brain. And then there is the pesky mismatch between our input systems. That means that while the VR visor can handle visual inputs, our brains still need to mix those visual inputs with things like touch and smell, which won't all match up. The result, you'll feel nauseated with continuous use, which isn't an inaccurate experience of adolescence. So while redoing your awkward teen years in the matrix isn't possible right now, it's absolutely a possibility in the near future. According to Frank Steinecke, a computer scientist from the University of Hamburg, we can easily assume that within the next five to 10 years or so, we will not be able to distinguish visually computer generated content from real world content anymore. And if you've survived the 10 years since a horrible prom night mishap, what's 10 more years to digitally redeem yourself? And there's good reason to be hopeful. According to astronomer David Kipping, there is already a 50-50 chance that we're living in a simulation. And the day that we create a simulated reality with conscious beings inside it, those odds jump from 50-50 to, oh, oh shit, oh shit, we're, we're almost certainly not real. So who knows? Maybe we already live in a simulated reality. Maybe we're all just gross little babies in jars on some dystopian future planet using our natural energy to fuel a monstrous system of autonomous machines. And any successful VR system we develop will just be another layer of deception created to keep us further removed from the monstrous truth of our own existence. But as long as we get French kissed by a dog, we'll probably be okay. That's all for this one, but thank you so much for watching and come back soon for another Science is Hard. Later.